This conference Should will be. now be recorded. But we thank Abba for this opportunity that he has given us to uh, assembly together. Uh, today, we're going to be dealing with our trust. Uh, and I titled the lesson, Do You Trust Him Until? And the reason why, why he led me to title it that way, because most of us trust Abba until a situation come up where we don't think he can uh, let us be victorious in that situation. So the trust is good as long as everything is going, you know, smooth. But when you get in a situation where you think you can't get out of it, do you still trust them? So all of us has been in that situation where we trust them, we trust them until a specific situation come up and then we walk in the flesh. We either not patient or we get angry or we, we, we lean on our own understanding. So that's why I titled it, Do You Trust Them Until? Right? And if we go back, well, if I can go back over my life, I can look at certain situations that I have erred in. Well, I trusted him until almost until the last minute. And then I decided to do something out of my own will. And, and it ended up horrible. But because of his grace and mercy, I'm still here and uh, repentant. And, and the trust is getting on another level. So we're going to deal with trust today because last week we dealt with commitment. And I think what, what helps a lot of times, what, what makes people become uncommitted is because of a lack of trust. You commit it until a certain situation come up, then you lose trust because sometimes your life can be on the line or it could be ego or pride. Or, or just straight selfishness, okay? So we're gonna deal with trust today because, I, I, let's pray in. Let's pray and then we're gonna read our first Corinthians. Hallelujah. Abba, we wanna thank you at this hour for allowing us to wake up this morning, for giving us strength to get up out of the bed, Father. It's your strength that you've given us that we either can get up out of the beds, Father, that we can clothe ourselves, that we can shower, Father, that we can just, eat whatever we ate this morning, we can feed ourselves, Father. It's, it's because of your grace and your mercy. And we don't take that lightly, Father. We, we, we love you. And we just thank you just for blessing us, Father, just with life. We thank you for give, putting a hunger and a thirst in us to seek after you. There's billions of people around the earth who have no idea who you are. That's not thankful. That's not seeking a hunger after you. So we thank you for calling us and giving us the ears to heed to that call. We ask you to continue, continue to bless us with your grace and mercy, continue to be compassionate toward us, and also allow us to be patient, compassionate, graceful, and merciful to others. Father, we thank you for your son, our Messiah, our King, Yeshua, the perfect example, the express image of who you are in this earth. We thank you, Yeshua, for your for being selfless, for following every command, every command that the Father has told you, for being that perfect example, for leading and guiding us and giving up your life so we can have life. We are forever indebted unto you, King, and we thank you. We ask you right now, Father, that you will open our hearts and our ears and our minds to receive a word at this hour from you. Bring us on one accord with you and also bring us on one accord as a symbol. Father, we thank you and we love you. In the name of your son, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to read 1 Corinthians 1.10. 1 Corinthians 1.10. And I'm going to second. Corinthians. It reads, now I beseech you, brethren. By the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. So we're talking about trust, right? Um, I'm going to ask, we, we, no one has to answer this out loud, but within yourself, just ask yourself these questions. 
Is he your provider? Has he always provided for you? Is he your protector? Has he always protected you? Is he your comforter? Has he has he, has he allowed his holy his ruach is his Holy Spirit to 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 comfort you? Has he ever lied to you? Just ask yourself those questions. Has, has he ever lied to you? Has, has, has he ever led you the wrong way? Right. And I and we really got the. I mean, it, it, it sounds good to say, "Oh, he's my protector. He's my provider. He's never lied to me. He always led me straight the, the, the right way." And that that stuff is true. But do you really believe? Because if you really believe that he is your protector, he is your provider, he's your security, and he never lied to you, and he only want the best for you, right? If you really believe those things, and it, and it, his name is good, his, his credit is good, like whatever he say, you, you all his promises, he ain't never broke a promise to you. If you really believe those things and, and those things are true in your heart, just think about it. Why do we not trust him with all our heart, all our mind, and all our soul? Why do we even try to lean on our own understanding? And all of us do it at times. Why do we not just, if he's all those things, We must understand that it's, 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 first of all, it's flesh, okay? It's because we're trying to protect this life. That, that's it. Because all of us on here, I believe in love with them, love them, and willing to sacrifice, and willing to, 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 die, to, to die for them. But a part of death, and I ain't even talking about a, a, a physical death, that, that'll be easy. Right? Well, I ain't gonna say it'd be easy. But I'm talking about when the situation come up and you have the opportunity to show love and joy and be patient or not speak what you think in your own mind because somebody got you right or uh, upset. This is the death I'm talking about dying to your yourself while you while you let yet alive humbling yourself we ain't talking about letting nobody just run over we ain't talking about that i'm talking about when 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 you have opportunity to show forth his character his fruit and watch this when the person don't deserve it or you think they're not worthy of his his mercy his grace. We have to get to the point because if you like trust, and, and, and we think the Almighty plays patience because this trust is 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 uh is levels to it. So you grow, you grow, you grow, you grow, you grow until you get to a point. You got some? Oh, and, right. Right. To trust, you say to trust somebody, you have to know them. I can't trust somebody you don't know. And, 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 I'm, and I'm gonna say this to that. That's true in a sense. But I want us to understand that over time, you begin to trust people and things. I, I put it, let's think about potato chips, right? You don't know who and what plant these potato chips come from. You don't know who made them. Half of us don't even know what they put in them but we'll eat a chip in a minute, trusting that it would not get us sick. You'll go to a fast food restaurant, you'll go to restaurants, you don't know them cooks. You don't know if they bite that, what they doing to your food, but you have a certain security in yourself that, hey, I'm gonna eat it.
because over time, over the years, you have built, uh, your family have been taking here, you've been doing these things your life. So now you have got, uh, how can I put it? You have became confident that these particular things won't do you no harm. And that's cool. But how long have you been serving him? How long have you been putting your trust and your faith in him and our king? So again, we're going to deal with this trust because we're going to have to trust him in order to stay committed, in order to stay faithful. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. And faith come by what? Faith come by hearing the word. So when that when that word come to you, right? If you trust him, you're gonna do it. If you don't trust him or you're afraid, right? Because the lack of trust, fear will creep in. Then you're gonna lean on your own understanding. So we're gonna we're gonna deal with it. <clears throat> we're gonna pull out a couple of definitions because in the Bible. The word trust is, is like four or five different, I think it's seven, but I'm only gonna deal with like five of them. It's like between five to seven words that that in the Hebraic thought all mean trust. And we're gonna see how uh how they come together. So we're gonna look up the first word and wrote it down. It's um and we're gonna go to the scripture to that we're gonna to go to the scripture to show how this word trust is used. Um, we're gonna to go to um, H, go to Proverbs 3, 5. Let me, let me go to Proverbs 3, 5. It's definitely famous scripture. We all should be aware of. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. But that word trust there is H982. It, it, it's Bata. Okay. This particular word here actually means to hang on, to attach yourself to to lean on. That's the mindset of this particular word trust here. It gives you an understanding to attach yourself, to lean on, or to depend, okay? Um, so it says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thy own understanding, okay? So this, this trust here, right, is giving you to, don't even, Think about, don't lean on your own understanding. Don't depend on your own understanding. You have to hang on to the Lord. Okay? And that word is H989. It's Bata. Okay? But they transferred over in English to trust. Okay? But the understanding, when they was writing this, and when they would see that word, they would know it means to hang on or to cling to, to attach. Okay? It would give you a more concrete understanding of it. Because we say we trust everything. We just use trust, I trust you, I trust, we trust any and everybody. Like I say, you trust all these restaurants. You don't know you don't know anything about them. You don't know who's cooking. You trust the red light. You go to the red light, you have enough trust, or, or you have enough trust that your light is red and that light is green. No, I don't know, but most people when they stop with the red light, they don't get out of their car. Oh, when they go to a green light, they don't get out of their car, run to the other side to see if that light red. You just go right through it. Let's go to uh let's go to the next word. It's gonna be in H3176. Maybe I should get a scripture for it. Uh go to Job Job 13 15. So that first word is understanding to hang on or to attach to, right? 
Let's see. Okay. This particular word here is when Job is saying, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. So Job, when you look at the word trust here, you see it's a different definition. It's H3176, right? It's your call, right? This particular trust is to have a weight or a hope. Okay. So this particular trust here is for you to have a, a weight and a hope, but it's not a hope in the sense of I'm just hoping for something. It's more of I, I, I have confidence that it's going to come to pass. No matter what's going on, I, I know he's already done it. No matter what, no matter what I'm going through. That's why Job is saying, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Meaning no matter what I'm going through, I know the outcome is going to be I'm going to be victorious. Okay, so when Job is saying I I I I trust him, even though I, I, I'm going through this this pain and suffering, I know I'm going to be victorious. And see, when you have a trust like this, when we say y'all call right, this particular word, the way you know you trust it in this manner is because they're going to be no grumbling and complaining, because you you have confidence that it's just going to be victorious in it. Because how can you say, I, I, I have this particular trust, and you're going through something, you're grumbling and complaining? No, because when you start grumbling and complaining about a situation you're going through, you're showing doubt that you're going to be able to come out of the situation. So we see one way of trust is to attach yourself, tie yourself down to it, and to lean on, right? Meaning I, I'm not even, it doesn't even matter what, what, what my understanding is. I know what this word say, and that I'm on that right there. This is this is the trust I'm gonna have, right? This particular trust here, right, is no matter what you're going through, right, your hope or your waiting, your expectation is that you're gonna be victorious. No matter what, no matter what the outcome looks like or, or what the situation is, uh, what it looks like or what it feels like, you know you're gonna be victorious. And, and we may see the day, if Abba will, how this understanding is what's going to catch, what's going to get a lot of people to become uncommitted. Because when they see certain things and start going through certain things, you can read all the scripture you want and you can quote them to yourself. And it's good to do that. But within yourself, what is your hope like? Do you trust them though you're being slaved? Is is to know and to have confidence that everything is gonna be okay. Hmm. And it's easy to say, well, we just gonna get to it. The next one gonna be, well, let me take my time here. Let's take my time. Let, let's take your time because we're gonna read, but we're gonna read about our ancestors when they went through the, uh, the wilderness. And this this right here, even before they got got to the mountain, they, they started getting a little shaky. After they just seen all the miracles that he done, right? They get out, but that trust wasn't there yet. Because the minute they got in another situation, and some of us do the same thing. He'll pull you out of one situation, then you get in another situation. But then your trust not there. Go to Psalms 119.4. And in it, Zion, it, it's all it's all a growing process. 74, 119.7. It, it's all a growing process. But you have to evaluate yourself and be honest with yourself to see where you're at. And then say, okay, okay, uh, uh, but this one, Matt, I need you to increase my faith here. We're going to see our faith and trust is tied together. Do 
Do you trust this word? <laughs> yeah. It says, just to prove this point, what we said in Job, it says, they that, and if you have your strongs, I'm gonna give you the number anyway, but it says, they that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hope in thy word. You see, that word hope there is the same word for trust, right? It's the H3176, the same exact word y'all call, right? The same word. So it's letting you know it's a hope, but behind this hope, you already trust and you know that it's gonna happen. You're not doubting while you're waiting for him to, uh, for something to come to pass. It's, it's no fear. You can't be trusting in, in, in him to, 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 to bring you out of the situation and you're, and, and you're fearful. So that's, that's all the enemy needs is to see that you're fearful and now doubt can come in and then the enemy can start sowing those seeds to you. And it, be, and it will cause you to become uncommitted and, or to try to figure out another way to do it. Just because you can't see how you're going to get out of this situation. The next one we're going to go to is Psalms 1820, 1830. You see, we, we trust, you trust the word. Then, then it's so easy that somebody can show you something. Now you doubt the word. What? Hallelujah. It says, Psalm 1830, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. You see that word trust there? Have another definition. It's H2620. Right, this particular word here is called saw. Right, this, this word here is to the flee in protection to have to confide in. To this, this more to give you understanding more to to to, to depend on him to, to put everything in him. Now you may say, well, we're gonna give you an example again on how. You can trust them like this, but then don't trust them over here. We, we trust them until we get to certain points. Because what will happen, you would trust them, okay, like for example, you trust them to get in a situation, right? You'll trust them to, okay, I, I believe, when well, you want something, I believe you're putting me in this job. I believe you put me in this marriage. I believe you put me in this relationship. He, he's leading me to do this, but then when you get in it, it don't go the way you want, but you don't trust he's gonna bring you through the situation. Because you go to lean on your own understanding. But to get in the situation, you have full trust. You had to trust to take that, that leap of faith, that trust to go into the situation, but then when things start going a little shaky, you don't trust that he's gonna work it out. No different than the ancestors. They trusted that he delivered them out. But the minute they get inside that wilderness, what happened to that trust? Is his word tried? Is it perfect to you? Do you believe it? Can you depend on him? That's why I asked those questions earlier. Can you depend on him? Can, can you lean on him? And it, it happens subtly, it doesn't, it's not. See, sometimes when we think about getting tried, like you getting tried, it's little things in life, right? When, when, when you gotta sit, again, when you got a situation to control your temper, to control your anger, do you trust that he's gonna handle the situation or do we just blow up and not trust that he's gonna handle the situation for us, that, he, that he's not gonna fight for us? Then we won't read it, Dave. We're gonna show how the whole thing uh, 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 uh. It's allowing him to fight for us.
that word also has a, a definition that lets you know that you put a, it, it has something to do with your refuge. When you trust in them, you find refuge in them. It becomes your protection. You, you can't have refuge and protect him and then you're trying to fight your own battle. Because now you're showing you don't trust them. Because now you want to fight your own battle. Either you're going to let him fight it or you're going to fight it. We, we fight through, through prayer. We, we, we fight through, through uh, with the fasting. We, we fight with, uh, with faith. And again, I don't have to keep saying this. It should already be understood. Somebody come to your house and try to attack, type you. You already know what the deal is. Okay? Um, but we talking about today when situations rise in our life, keeping that trust in him so you'll stay committed to him. Because the minute you stop trusting him, you become uncommitted. Now you start doing what you want to do. Making your own moves. And I don't know, has anybody here ever made a, a, their own move and, 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 you, and you know you went against what God told you, what he wants you to do, and it worked out good? Let's go to Psalm 78. Verse 22. It says, verse 22, it says, because they believed not in God and trusted not in salvation, right? So I want us to see this word here. It's H539. Amon. This word is tied to faith. Okay, that's why it has the word belief there. But look inside that definition, we'll see the word trust there. Okay. So your belief is tied to your 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 your, your trust and your faith. It's all tied together. This is one thing about the, the, the words in the Hebrew thought, they're all linked together. All of them are linked together, right? It says, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation, though he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. And he rained down manna upon to eat and had given them corn of heaven. So because they didn't have any faith, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. See, again, hallelujah, he, he brings us out of situations, right? When you start going through trials, do you still trust them? Or is it to, or like the title, until, until you find yourself in a situation where you say like, hey, I got, I got to step up now. I got to make a way. I got to, I have to let this person give them a piece of my mind in, in a wicked way. I ain't talking about uh, uh, talk, talking righteous and telling people how you feel and, 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 and standing up as far as uh, re respect, okay? But when we get hot-headed and we, we lose control, when we become what, what we, uh, uh, when we lose temperance, we become uncommitted to this world. I, I go to Isaiah 22. Twenty-three. Isaiah twenty-two, twenty-three says, "And I will fasten him as a nail, right, as a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious strong to his father's house." What word in that? What word in verse twenty-three has something to do with trust or faith? I'm gonna read it again. 
and I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be a for a glorious throne to his father's house. Huh? It's the word sure. Hmm? You know what? I, yeah. And, and fasten, fasten will be, I, I'm, yeah. But then the sure thing is to, what, think of a tent. We already know this. Think of a tent. When you're doing a tent, you fasten the, 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 the scrap to the nail, but then do you, do you knock that thing down to some soft ground or do you get the hardest ground you can find? To make it sure you're gonna you're gonna put that nail that tent peg inside a sure place to make sure it's secure. Now you can trust in it. Y'all know how you get in them tents and them, them, the, the, the things be popping up. You don't feel safe. You gonna make sure that thing is in the ground. It's sure, right? And it's that word Amon. It's H five thirty nine, right? To be firm, permanent. Okay. To be sure, to trust. So what happened when you have a lack of trust in the net? Well, there's something wrong with it, but we got to get better. When you find yourself uh, not trusting him, and all of us are here. Well, I ain't going to say all. I don't know everybody. I'm going to say this. If you find yourself acting in the flesh at times, right, you know you're not trusting him with all your heart and all your mind. So it lets you know you need to get more secure in him. You need to get more more firm in him. You need to, uh, uh, that, that nail need to be dug a little deeper. You need to get more anchored. Hmm? You need to get closer. So, you know, you, when we say the, the trust in what all your heart, mind, and soul, to love God with all your mind, heart, and soul, to trust Him, but you don't, to the point you don't lean on your own understanding, that's the hardest thing to do, is to not lean on your own understanding. Because your own understanding deal with what you see, what you smell, what you taste, what you touch. Every, every, your own understanding will cause fear. And, 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 and oh man, because all of it is not bad. Because he give you eyes, he give you ears, he give you he give you your five senses, and and that stuff is for defense as well. If something's hot, something's hot. Your senses tell you don't touch it. Your eyes can show you things that can be dangerous. So if, those five senses are not bad, but guess what? It comes to a point when we're dealing with faith and we put in situations that the enemy can use illusions and can call those things your sense. He can use your senses against you. So when it comes to a certain point, we have to not lean on, on our five senses. We have to trust in the Lord. Don't lean on our own understanding. And that's the hardest thing to do because your life is tied to it. This is why last week we went over the cost of commitment is going to be your life. So we see, we're just gonna deal with those four. So we see the first one, trust, it, it means to hang on, to attach to. The second one definition was to know, to have confidence in, okay? The third definition was to depend. Okay. And the last one was to hold firm to be sure. The, these are, and it's two more, but I was going to deal with these five or four. The, when we talk about we trust them, how long do you trust them? And to what point? Do, how long do you trust them? To what point? Or do you trust them all the way? So today we're going to get into a couple stories in the Bible that can bring out trust and get a better understanding. Because, hallelujah, there are going to be people that's going to cause you, right, to not trust. It always, it always nine times ten come from the outside. Because most of us say, I trust him with all my heart, all my mind. I mean, I, I love him with all my heart, all my mind. So I trust him. He's been good to me. But 
you will have individuals, or it could just be the TV or something, still individuals that get that cast a shot of doubt. And once they do, that's why you gotta be careful about your surroundings. Because you can just be on fire for them. You could be, you, you can have that trust. I'm gonna run through a wall. Nothing can't stop me. And then somebody come cast a little doubt, a, a little doubt. Now I begin you to, to question the trust and the loyalty of Elohim. And we have no reason to doubt him. All his promises that he have in his word, if we trust in him, we'll get him. But we also have to understand Zion, and that's what we're going to touch a little bit now when we deal with this wilderness, that when you're going, he bring you out, now he got to take, you got to prove you. So now you're being proven to see where you're at. So these trials and tribulations, these things that we go through in life, it's actually proven to show us where we're at so we know what we need to get on our face at and cry out to him so he can build that trust. So now, no matter what happened, you can trust him all the way to the end. You can, you'll be able to endure until the end. And enduring to the end has a lot to do with trust. Because to endure, you have to commit yourself, even if it's going to cost you your life. E even the shame, when the shame comes. Because they were trying to shame the king. They were trying to shame uh, Messiah into not trusting him. See, sometimes you, you don't understand somebody try to shame you, uh, 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 put you in an embarrassing situation, but it is only that the, that the enemy is trying to get you not to trust him. So you can act accordingly, lean out on your own. So now you can lean on your own understanding and try to fix the situation. Hmm. Let's go to number 16. Let's get to it. When we say trust, I trust you. You know how many people you trust you don't know? But when we talk about trusting the Messiah is on a whole nother level. This is why that scripture is so important. It says, acknowledge him in all our in all in all your ways. E even the government, even the government show you uh, have a level of trust in you. Every year, every year the government shows the level of trust in you. You know how they do it? And most people lie. Most people allow their holy self. The government trusts you. They trust you when you're doing them taxes. Don't they trust that you're gonna put that you made this amount? Okay, that you that, 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 that they're gonna trust that you made this amount, and they're gonna give you your income tax based off what you sent in. Based off that you have five kids, or two kids, or three kids. They trust that you put the right, that you the head of that household. And they're going to see that money based off that level of trust they have in the citizen. You know how many people lie, betray the government trust? <laughs> you know, I, I know some people don't got caught. Somebody got two kids, they ain't got no kids. I'm renting somebody kids. I have they do it. Again, like $1,000 or something like that. You know, the, the, the government trusts you, you're going to tell the truth. But if you get caught lying, you break that trust, you know what they do? They're going to audit you. They're going to go by seven years to see, man, we've been trusting you for the last seven years. Let me go back and peek and see, have, have, have you been lying to us? Because we trusted you for the last seven years, man, that you was a, a, a good citizen, that you would not falsify these taxes. And they go back and see that you don't put on... <laughs> I, I don't I don't never speak hypothetically. I know real situations, so I don't want to start talking about real situations. But, but hey, all I'm saying is this right here, Zion. Even in the gov, even in this worldly sense, 
I just use the tights to show that you're getting trusted and they're sending you money based on what you put in. But if you get caught lying, you betray that trust, not if you start watching. But if you're good, you ain't got to worry about nothing. You understand what I'm saying? You know, I I know people, a couple people don't lie on them taxes. I'm just waiting on my taxes to come. They waiting on their taxes, but they shake. They acting like, like, man, it's coming, bro. I don't know. Why you don't know? If you don't uh, uh, put them, uh, you don't put them kids on that ain't your kids. Uh, yeah, I ain't gonna say much. But it is what it is, man. Brothers don't do that no more. But look, we have to, what I'm saying, see, even when, look, when you're being honest, you can trust them. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Because the thing is, y'all y'all want to, he, 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 he imputed righteousness into Abraham. He trusted him. Now let me see what you're going to do. That's what he done to us too, man. Look, look. I'm, oh, he told our answers. I'm gonna get you out of here. Put you in the woods, man. Let me, let me see how y'all act. What y'all? Well, I remember we used to go to talk about them taxes around certain individuals where you can see brothers in there get, go getting a little squeamish. Go to talk about them taxes. <laughs> oh man, hallelujah! But look, the point I'm saying is. Trust is so important to your commitment, to your walk, to your faith. Number 16. <laughs> All right, we're going to deal with these two individuals, right? Cora and Dathan. All right, we're going to deal with them first. Um, how they, right, they, 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 they were causing so much trouble. Most of us know the story that they were, all they were doing is trying to uh, cast doubt in the people, right? They cast doubt in the people so they would not trust that Abba was leading Moses to lead the people the rest of the way. Okay? And it all started because they didn't have trust. Or they thought they start leaning on their own understanding. But let's read. We're going to start at verse 1. It says, Now Korah, the son of Azar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and, and on the son of Pelah, the son of Reuben, took men. Let me say this too, because even though we see sometimes we tie core and Dathan together, right? They they are tied together, but not in the sense that most people think. Cora problem was he thought, and we're gonna read it, he thought that he was that they were worthy to be uh on the same level as Moses and Aaron. Dathan and Aben problem has nothing to do with that. Okay. Dathan's issue was. He was from the seed of Reuben, so he thought that they should have been first. Because remember what happened? Reuben was the oldest son. So Reuben, so but but now we see that Abba is not putting the Levites up there. So Dathan and Aben, they're like, yo, this is their issue. They're from the seed of Reuben, so their issue in the fight is not so much being the priest. Their issue is they're thinking that since they're the oldest, right? They're the sons of the oldest, we should be leading this thing. So what happens is to Corey and Dathan both have issues, right? But they're coming together for one cause, okay? And it's the same thing that's going to happen. It's happening now. You have two people that really don't even have really nothing to do with each other because they got an issue, right? They just come together. They say, hey, man, let's get the joke out of here, all right? I wanted to point that out. So let's see here. And they rose up early before Moses when certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. So what, what, what they done, 
They went, man, this thing is going on a day two. It's going to happen. What these guys done, Core done this, they decided to go get some, what you would call known people, right? Because if I go get the known people that's within Israel, it's pretty much everybody else going to follow them. Okay? So let me go get 250 men that everybody know, everybody well respected or whatever, and, and, and whisper in their ear, right? And they're because they so famous, or they were, or, or, or they're men of uh, people know them. They can cause everybody else not to trust in what Yah is telling Moses. That's what's going on. And always, hey, nothing is new under the sun. All this stuff is happening now. It's gonna happen again. But and and they and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Take ye too much upon you. Seeing all the congregation are holy, it's the first mistake. Let me let me, let me say this. Because well, let me read. Seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. First, I want us to understand this. This, this is why me one thing I look. I got a, we had a group of men that 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 I you know the Lord has blessed me. Do some things, right? And one thing that I would, if a brother is bike biting or talking behind a brother's bike or whatever the situation is, man, get out of here. Now, if you want to come to me, you got an issue with a brother, we have issues. Let's come and let's get this brother together so we can talk. All right. But don't try to bring me into another situation and try to sow a seed of disliking this brother or, or vice versa. You understand what I'm saying? That's that's one of the things that I just be like, I don't even I don't like dealing with people like that. Okay, these are what these guys are doing. Okay, and and I because I, I have had it happen, and I'm like two brothers to come talking about each other or different times. I'm like, man, why y'all just want to talk together? Come on, let's sit down together. And they don't want to sit down together. So at this point, I know, yo. You, you, you boys, I don't know what y'all got going on. Y'all might be trying to get me to go off. But my, my, my thing is, Zion, if you want to call the dot of trust and this person, want to call the dot of trust and this person. Let me finish. Let's go. And they gathered themselves together. I'm gonna say this. I want to say this. Everybody in Israel ain't holy either. So I got brothers getting mad at me because, hey, let's just come together. Everybody, man, I ain't coming together with no unrighteous brothers or brothers that's wicked. There's certain things a brother don't believe in get from around me until you get that straight. We ain't linking up with no brothers that believe in Martha Wise. We ain't linking up with no brothers that believe Joseph was a daddy. Definitely ain't linking up with no brothers that believe the Bible is all. I don't believe these scriptures. That ain't happening. We ain't, we, we ain't just coming together. So one, one little trick of the enemy to get people is, hey, everybody just come together. Everybody holy, man. All us is. Let's just come together. It, this is how they done it then, and they're going to do the same thing now. But we're going to see some here. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, ye take too much upon you sin all the congregation are holy, every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. When Moses heard it, he fell upon his face because he already understood that, man, this is so wicked what you're doing. P people don't understand. This This ain't nothing light right here because you're fit to call so many other people to go off by this, man. So Moses fell on his face. And he spoke unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who are and who is holy. So since you saying everybody holy, you know what, bro? That we're to see right now. Because I'm bring, I'm setting you apart. I'm bringing you out to get you holy. That's why I'm bringing, that's why I'm separating you from Egypt. Are you holy? Are you you set apart, but you you set apart from Egypt, but Egypt's still in you. Y'all know the story. They wanted to go back to Egypt. 
how you set apart from Egypt and then you want to go back. But they didn't have this understanding. Anyways, and, and it would cause him to come near unto him. Even him who he has chosen, who he calls to come near to him, unto him. This dude, take your censers, Cor, and his company, and put fire thereon, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow, and it shall be that the man whom the Lord doeth choose, he shall be holy. Yeah, take too much upon you, your son of a Levi, right? Then they coming all slick and humble, like, yo, man, y'all got too much on you, bro. You know what I mean? Let, let me get a little bit of that. Let, let me help you out a little bit. Trying to come with the, the uh, hood, we call it trying to hood wing Moses, right? But Moses seen the play coming a, a mile away. And Moses said unto Kor, Here, I pray you, ye sons of Levi. See, how, how Moses already knew it. First of all, you already go get your 250. Why you come to me straight up from the get go? Should have came to me if you feel this way, Kor, you should have came to me straight up. You go get, you already conspired with 250 people already, bro. So that's how you know you already cast the shadow of doubt to get them not to trust what's going on. Yeah, you're bite biting. So he already seen the play. It wasn't sincere. Because I'm pretty sure it would have been no problem. It's like, okay, bro, man, we all is when we come out, man, who, how you getting charged, man? How did the whole time choose you or something like that? Talk to me what's going on. What, what's your plan? What's going on? But no, you already, he already conspired behind his bike when he got these other people, and now you want to come playing the humble role. They didn't know who he was dealing with. Verse 8. And Moses said unto Kor, Here I pray you, you son of the Levi, seeming it but a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself. To do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he has brought thee near to him, and, and, and thy brother, the son of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood also. He like, yo, you I, I already don't he already don't bless you to 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 uh uh to handle the work, some of the work, but now you you want to be in charge too. You 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 want to be famous, you want to show out that it ain't enough. You, they, they want it all. I, I got one of the brothers, one of the brothers that's with us. He, they, they do stuff online, right? So I was starting to know that, like, like, say you trying to, if you're an Israelite, they get, you trying to, like, say you selling shirts, or whatever, right? Well, other Israelite, they got like big channels or whatever the situation. Is. So I'm thinking, if I'm a brother, you got some product, I got a big channel, man. Come in, let me get your product. I'll put it on my channel, or whatever. Go ahead and get your advertisement. People look at the channel. You can sell your stuff. Right? And, and man, the brother was telling me some brothers don't even want to, like, even put you on their channel or whatever. You know what I mean? To get you some get you some views or have likes or whatever you're saying. And that's crazy. And then you talking about we all is and we all holy, we all righteous. It's all love. No, it's not. Because if, if you really love me, you know, you got the platform or whatever, put, put me up. People want, most people, they want it all. They don't want, they're not satisfied with what Yah has put them at and the place he has put them. They want it all. We talking about trust though. For which cause both thou and all the company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan. So I, so much going on here, but I want to speak to trust. He he never core, he talked to core, right? Dathan, he now is fit to sin for Dathan, but Dathan ain't gonna come. I just want us to understand this, okay? Because they 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 both got an alt against Moses, but for different reasons, okay? And, and Moses sent to call Dathan and, and Abraham, the son of El Elab, which said, We would not come up, okay? So he don't even want to come. They are like, man, we ain't come up to talk to you. Man. You know what I mean? We ain't come. All right. Um, <laughs> it, 
Think how disrespectful that is. This the brother that brought you out. You still been a slave in Egypt. And I'm calling for you. You don't want to come? But everybody holds it. Uh, everybody holds it. Is it a small thing that thou has brought us up out of the land that full with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Want us to catch what he just said. Now, he, he's saying that Egypt was the land of milk and honey. Now, we understand they did have the land of Gosha, right? <laughs> it is a small thing that has brought us up out of the land that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. Moreover, thou has not brought us into a land that flows with milk and honey, or given us heritage to the fields and vineyards. Would thou put out the eyes of these men? Will we not come up? We would not come up. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou that they are errant tomorrow. And, and, and take every man his censer and put censer in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, 250 censers. Thou also and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid incense thereof and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of this spirit of all flesh, shall one man sin and will thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord said unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Barat, Korah, and Dathan, and Abiram. So he's telling them, separate yourself from these men. Y'all probably saying, what this got to do with trust? We're going to see. Because if you're around people that don't, don't trust what the work of the Lord is doing, they're going to cause you not to trust. They're going to pull you down. And this is how to set up, just giving y'all one little part of the enemy's playbook on what he's trying to do right now. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abraham and the elders of Israel and followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their sins. So they got up, so they got up from the tabernacle for Dathan and Abraham on every side, and Dathan and Abraham came out and stood in the door of the tent, and their wives and their sons and their little ones, the little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them on my own what? Mind. Okay, he wasn't leaning on his own understanding. The, the Lord has sent him to do these things. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of men, then the Lord have not sent me. But the Lord make a new thing and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up with all the obtaining uh, with all that obtain unto uh, them and they go down quick into the pit then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the lord i want us to understand the trust right now that moses is having right he just makes he made a contract he said look if this happened i'm off if this happened they off okay now, we already know that Moses don't do nothing. He didn't do nothing out of his own mind. So we know this got to be coming from the Lord. But he got to have enough trust that guess what? This going to happen. Because he out there with all these people. They already want to get rid of him anyway. All right? <laughs> and it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground cave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that pertained to core and all their goods. They and all that obtained it to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. 
I'm gonna jump over to 41 because I want to see something. I doubt it. I doubt and trust has already been cast. Look at verse 41. Okay. You can read read the rest when you get time. Look at verse 41. It says, um, I'm gonna start at verse 40. To be a memorial unto the children of Israel, that no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron come near to offer incense before the Lord, that he be not of Korah and his company, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses, right? But on tomorrow, all the children of the congregation, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. So they had already so doubting them. These, these people not even trusting what just happened. What did you see happen? They still saying, Man, you don't kill the people of the Lord. And it came to pass. Well, y'all about to stay in your life, your word. Get that prayer life up. Fast perform. Humble yourself. Pray to him. Stay anchored. Because I'm telling you, the same thing is about to happen. It's happening as we speak. Judgment must come to the house of the Lord first. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation and behold the cloud covered it and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, get up from among this congregation that I may consume them as in a moment, and they fell upon their faces. And Moses said to Aaron, take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar and put it on an incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath going out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. And that plague stopped. And, and, and they that died in the plague were 14,700 besides them that died about the manner of horror. And Aaron, and, and so they died because they was trusting in a nut. They died because they was trusting in this, these, these famous men, that they were thinking they were men of God, leaning on their own understanding. 14,000 some people got taken out. Think how, look, I just want us to understand. This brother split the Red Sea, okay? All the 10 plagues already happened. You would think that they would trust that Yah is leading Moses. But what's going on here, underline, is that they got so much of Egypt in them. Whoever is, it, 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 whoever is, uh, have a kindred spirit, or kindred spirit, this who they're going to put their trust in. Moses wasn't about that. Moses said, like, Aaron, man, we should get up out of here. We're going. So, this is why you got to get yourself, make sure you stand his word so you don't get caught up with a kindred spirit and then you put your trust in something that, that really is your flesh that you're uh, uh, liking, that, that's liking you to this person. Got to make sure that your spirit is connecting you. Not your flesh. Can I add something to you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please do. I was just going to say um, that that's actual proof that um, believing what you see is not enough because they saw all these great things and that should have been enough to cause belief. So you need something beyond what you see, hear, touch, smell in order to truly believe. Hallelujah. Well said. Well said. Well said. They seen it. <laughs> they seen all this stuff, and they know you know how, you know how how Moses' name had to be ringing. I, I mean, come on, just think about that. What? Nah, it's good. But um, let me finish. Good, good stuff. So go to go to uh, let's go to Numbers twenty.
boy. This is why I say, hey, if I start going away from this word, y'all get away. Pray for me that I come back. But I'm 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 praying that I stay anchored. But if I start talking against this word, man, y'all going to fast a uh, hundred day fast. If you love me that much, but all I'm saying is going to fast. Pray, man, get me get come back right, right? Because you don't want to be in a situation, and I know so many people in a situation where they're 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 putting people up based off their old works. This is a daily thing. Any day somebody can uh, start transgressing. I don't care what you've done last year, last month, the word you gave two years ago, three years ago. Man, that's good. Hallelujah. Man, let's go. But today, what you doing? What you talking about today? Don't get caught up in uh, what somebody done 10 years ago. Numbers 20. Want us to get this. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, then came, then came the children of Israel, even the whole congregation to the desert of sin, the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh. Miriam died there and was buried there. And there was no water. I, I'm just going to plug this in. You can do your research on it, study it. When Miriam died, long Miriam was there, that water was falling in too. But when Miriam died, right, that water dried up. But it's still a study on that to get time about Miriam is water. Okay, but it's interesting. But we talk about trust today. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people taught with Moses and spake, saying, "With God that we have died when our brethren died before the Lord, and why have ye brought us up the congregation of the Lord into the wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there?" And wherefore have you made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It is no place of seed or figs or vines or pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. Let me say this about this. We even have to put our trust in these last days. Don't look, it, I'm, I'm definitely with garden. You should garden, right? I'm definitely with if somebody want to get their land, brother, get together, get your land, whatever. That's beautiful. But don't put your trust in your garden. Don't put your trust in your land, okay? Because he's going to take, look, they was in Gosha. He took them out of Gosha and took them to a place, into a desert place. So when it all comes down, your garden ain't going to sustain you. Your land ain't going to sustain you. You're going to have, he's going to take you out into a desert place where you're going to have to be proven, okay? But you got these people they call preppers. These people that uh, they call preppers. They, they prep and they put all their trust in their preparation for, for the, uh, uh, for the destruction of this earth. Man, that your preparation ain't going to save you from nothing. Your garden ain't going to save you from nothing. And uh, what that place in the California, a uh, couple of peppers, wildfire came and wiped up all these little harvests. So we have to put our trust, that's why you got to put, don't lean on your own understanding. It's good to prepare, but make sure your trust is in him. Yeah. You know, you because hey, we got to go on a run. You get your cucumbers, your tomatoes, what the lemons, uh, apples, whatever, oranges, uh, onions. We got about, about, about six days for that stuff to go to get rot. And we got to go on a run with some, uh, some fruit. Yeah, I know you can can some things, but my point is look, put your faith and trust in him because he took them away from their land where they had, <clears throat> where they had everything. He took them away. Yes, ma'am. You get that. He, he took them away. From, from from that from that stuff and took them to a desert place to see I, I need y'all to trust in me. I don't need you to trust and depend on what you don't uh you don't make your little survival kit. Nothing wrong with a survival kit. But we ain't put no trust in no survival kit. Hell you how your survival kit get your book bag, have that stuff piped up, get your stuff be prepared. But my trust is in y'all. All right, I want to say that. <clears throat> he, he, he says, it, it is, it, it, oh, man. we talking about trust. When they brought them out, when, when he brought them out of Egypt, we know these people weren't saying, hey, get us some seeds, we're going to get us some. They weren't taking nothing like that, right? They, 
they, they, they mind said, well, we finna go, we going to the promised land, right? So they, 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 they mind, Moses didn't tell them to get none of this stuff because he already knew we gonna, he gonna provide for us. So we can't get so carnal, so fleshly, but we think that we can uh, set up stuff for ourselves to depend on. All our trust must be in him. You you have <clears throat> let me let's see it. And and Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather thou the assembly together, and the Aaron and Aaron thy brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes and, and he shall give forth his water and thou shalt bring forth them water out of the rock so thou shalt give the congregation and their breast drink and Moses took the rock and, and beast, beast drink sorry about that and Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock and he said unto them here now Ye rebels. Well, here now, ye rebels, must we fetch out you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod, he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake, I wanted to see this, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, because ye what? Believe me not. You didn't trust me. Okay? to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given you. And we're gonna see something in a minute, but look. So just like the coach was saying, it's something deeper has to be in you for this trust to come. You can't go off what you see. They had seen so many different miracles, but yet they come here and they start down again. They trusted him all the way to this point, when they think they ain't got no food, they think they ain't got no water, okay? He got the cloud, he got the fire, by the cloud by uh, uh, day, the fire by night. They seeing all this stuff. They know what happened when they came out of uh, Egypt. But until they trust him, until they got to a situation where they thought he was going to abandon them. Moses' problem was he, he knew they were rebels. He called them rebels. He knew they was rebel rousers. He got him so angry to he misspoke, talking about we gonna uh, get this water, we're gonna fetch this water for you. He hit that rock twice. Didn't trust that Abba was gonna uh, allow him to speak, speak to the rock. And guess what he said? Because you believe me not, y'all ain't gonna be able to go up. Y'all know the rest of the story. These brothers have been battling and fighting to get these people to this particular point for, for, for years. But watch this. This is the water of, 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 of Mabara because the children of Israel strove with the Lord and he was sanctified in them. And Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus says thy brother Israel that knows all the traveling that has befallen. Huh? The fella. Travel. I want us to see this right here. Something that was that last night I was looking at it. Watch this. The um but the 2223, think it's 2223. Uh go to numbers 2223, Zion. I want us to see this. No. No, no, it's not 22, 22. I want us to see this right here. It's gonna say um when they when he when he brought them up out of the uh they didn't have good and the knowledge of good and evil. Remember that? It's the spiritual we're gonna bring out when he when he brought them out. Oh man, I want us to see this. It's in verse 23. He brought them out. 
but the kids knew no good and evil. No, you know what? That's in Deuteronomy. Yes. Check this out. Go to Deuteronomy 1, Zion. So we understand this right here. Moses, he trusted the Lord until he got to a point where the rebel rivals got him so angry that he was like, man, the heck with it. He hit it twice. Okay. Up until this point, Moses was trusting. He was trusting. He was believing. He had faith until he got to a point where he lost it. And he hit the rock twice because of rebel rivals. Go to Deuteronomy 1. We got to trust them all the way. Right, right. If somebody else don't trust them, you have to keep going, Zion. Um, you see, um, I'm at verse 1. Deuteronomy 1. Um, I'm going to read verse 1 for context. We're going to skip down. It says, These be the words which Moses spoke unto all Israel on the side of Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran and, I pronounce the word, Topel and Laban and Ha Sarah and Dezahab. Okay? There are 11 days' journey from Herah by the way of Mount Seir until Kadeshabar. Okay? So, Jump over to verse 19. Let's get it. It says, And when we departed from Hiram, we went through all the great and terrible wilderness, which he saw, which he saw by the way of the mountain of, er, of the er, 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 Aramites, as the Lord of our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh. Barnira, and I said unto you, ye are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God does give us. Okay? Now, behold, the Lord our God has set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy father has said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. Fear not, neither be discouraged. I think I see something. Let's hit this word discourage. What, 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 what does this word discourage mean? But this word here also. When, okay, when we see this word discourage, I just want us to understand this, right? It's to be discouraged is to be afraid, right? We already know that to be to be terrified, right? To be to be broken. But Reason why I want to point this word because when he's telling you not to be discouraged, when you become discouraged, it's easy for you to lose what trust. Okay, and you become discouraged by what you see or what you go to thinking, it can discourage you. Okay, so I want to understand he's telling them, man, don't be discouraged. This is what get people to again to lose trust to become uncommitted because they get discouraged about what they see or what they think that they, they lose their hope remember one of the definitions that we looked up for trust had something to do with your hope that you're going to be victorious we say though he slay me yet will i trust him he kept hope he did not get the Job did not get discouraged by the balls that came on him can you imagine the, the uh the, the story with Job? the brother coming to the house say one by one by one, all these brothers came in. You lost your land. You lost your your, your cattle. You lost your you lost your, your kids. You, you lose your, your wife. All this stuff start happening to him. Bite the bite the bite. He did not get discouraged. He didn't lose hope because when you read really Joel's forty two, I think it's verse twenty two. It'll tell you that he knew that God can take care of all things. He knew it. He didn't get discouraged. He did not lose trust. Even when the boys came upon him, he still had trust being in hope that, guess what? That y'all gonna pull it out. This is why he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Because no matter what I'm going through, no matter who I'm losing, I'm gonna keep my trust in him. I'm not gonna come to become disturbed, discouraged because once you become discouraged, Roman complaining gonna set in. 
a like and commitment gonna happen. Then you're gonna find yourself leaning on your own understanding. Verse uh 22. And ye came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out the land and bring us word again by what we must go up and into what cities we shall come. And Sam, and Sam pleased me. And I took 12 men of you, one of, of a tribe, and they turned and went unto the mountain and came unto the valley of Ishko and searched it out. And they took out of the fruit of the land their hands and they brought it down unto us and brought us word again and said, it is a good land which the Lord our God does give it us. Okay, want us to understand this. They already stand it's good. Plus, y'all already promised them they're going to get it. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but what? Rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and you murmured in your tent and said, because the Lord hated us, he has brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Whether shall we go up, our brethren has discouraged our hearts. Boy, I want to. He said, Whether shall we go up? Our brother, our brother has discouraged our heart, saying, The people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Akinims there. I want us to understand this. The brothers came back and discouraged them. It, it made their hearts melt. Okay? But the crazy thing about this to me is the same thing is going to happen with Rahab. Now, remember Rahab say they got discouraged, they hearts melted just by hearing of the goodness what the Lord had done with our people coming out of Egypt. But here, we get discouraged. You had people saying that he hated them, murmuring in the tents. Let's finish this up. Twenty nine. Then say unto the. Then I said to you, dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, see, he say he go before you, right? He shall fight for you according to according to all that he did. For you in Egypt before your eyes. So he he told him, look, I'm gonna go before you. I'm gonna already fight this battle. So if you got the Lord going before you, fighting this battle, not to mention what what he don't brought you from. You already don't overcame so many battles until you get to this point. And now he's telling you he's gonna go before you and fight this battle. Why would you not trust him? And in the wilderness, where ye have seen how the Lord thy God bear thee, and a man doeth bear his son. And all that way ye went until ye came into this place. So I brought you, I brought you, I brought you through all these different channels, all these different trials and tribulations. Now you get to this place, you see a giant, and now you lose losing trust again. We, we can't down them because we do the same thing today. We go from battle to battle to battle to battle to battle. We overcome, we overcome, we overcome. And every time we get to a point where this seems so big, we get discouraged. We lose trust in it and we don't stay committed. I, 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 I'm guilty myself. I'm a lot better than I used to be, though. You know, a lot better. Let's go. Yet in this thing, ye did not what? Believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you to search out a place to pitch your tents in, the, in the fire night to show you by, by, by what way ye should go in a cloud by day. Did you understand? This the Lord tell him already went before you. I already, I already made this place perfect for you. I already went before you. So, so it's, it's like he's saying, it, it's like, look, I already went and tried it out. Now you don't trust to follow me? Verse 
what happens, Zion, it, it's like when you're a little kid, and we're going to see it too. When you're a little kid, you trust your parents so much. You, you'll tell them to, you can give a little kid some candy, some food, and they'll just eat, right? You, you give it to them to eat the food. You know, you play little games with them. But when you get a little older, you get about 9 or 10 years old or 12, you start believing in your own senses. Especially when you get an adult, somebody say, close your eyes and taste this. You're going to be like, nah, I don't trust you like that. But a little kid will do it. They'll eat. But an adult, you go up to one of us, close your eyes, taste this right here. Little kid gonna trust the parent. Little kid gonna trust the brothers and sisters uh, when, when they're at a certain age. But when we get start leaning on our own understanding, man, we don't trust nothing. I gotta see, I gotta see something. I gotta have an understanding of it. And we look, trust and understanding. Let me say this because we know it all I get and get understanding. But then the Bible say lean, lean out of your own understanding. Right. So how does all this come together? How and all that getting, getting understanding, but then I don't lean on my own understanding. It's this understanding. But the thing is, he's the one that has to give you understanding. Y'all remember. And I, you remember in uh, Luke 20, Luke 24, 44. Right. When he said he opened up the Torah to them and then he gave them understanding. Abba has to open us up. He has to open our understanding and that understanding he gives you. This is what you lean on. You have to lean on his understanding that he gives you, not your own understanding. And the first level of the understanding is his word. But let me, let me read 34. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wrath and, and, and swear, saying, Surely thou shalt not one of these men in this evil generation see that the good land which I swear to give unto your fathers. Saith Caleb and the son of Juniper, he shall see it and to him will I give the land that I have trotted upon and to his children because he have wholly followed the Lord. I mean he wholeheartedly followed him, trusting with all his heart. Also the Lord was very angry with me for your sakes, saying thou also shall not go in thither. Right? So the Lord got angry with, with, with Moses because of the rebel, because he stopped trusting based off them. And that's what we can't be. We, you, you don't stop trusting in the Lord based off somebody else. But Joshua, the son of Nun, would stand it before thee. He shall go and thither, encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit. It. Moreover, your little ones, this is what I want to get at. More of your little ones, which ye, which ye say should be a prey, and your children, which is in the day, had no knowledge between good and evil. They should go in thither, and unto them I will give it, and they shall possess it. So these new kids that came out, they had no knowledge of good and evil. When the last time we seen some, what we see knowledge, uh, knowledge of good and evil at? That's in the garden, right? Adam and Eve was in the garden, living it up. But then they decided to get a piece of that tree, right? We never was able to have no, no uh, how can I put it, the understanding of, uh, of knowledge of good and evil. Because it's on the same tree, right? So he was raiding, he was raiding up a whole new people, a whole nother, with a, with a have a clear mind where you would totally depend on him. Whatever he say, you're going to do. Because remember, he's taking them to the promised land. So because the kids weren't poisoned with this knowledge of good and evil, right, which will lead you to depend on your own understanding of what you think is good or, or, or bad. Now, I'm, I'm going to raise up another generation. Now, I'm going to take them in there. That's what he said. He said, your children, which is in this day, had 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 knowledge between, watch this, which had knowledge between good and evil, they should go neither, they should go thither, and, and, and they, and, and to them will I give it, and they shall possess it. They had knowledge, they had no, they had no knowledge between good and evil. 
they shall go and thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. See, that get us in trouble a lot of times because what you got? He want us exactly. He want us like little children to depend on him. I don't know what to do, Abba. What do you want me to do in this situation? Lead me, guide me, tell me. I trust whatever you tell me to do. No matter what it seems like, no matter what it feels like, whatever you tell me, I'm going to do it. I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to try to weigh which one is right. When you tell me to do something, that's what I'm doing. It's I, I can trust your word. You never lied to me. But when you get grown, you get your little understanding, a little knowledge. Huh? Get your little testimony. What you got? Yeah. yeah my mama, my mama my told me. Exactly. Yeah, what, what she's saying, like when you when you have a little kid, you teach a little kids things, they go around other family members. When those family members try to tell them to do it, they say, I can't do that. I can't eat that. My mom and daddy told me not to. Even though they probably don't even understand the levels of why they know this what mama and daddy said. And that's what he want us at. Whatever he told me, that's what I'm going to do. I ain't. Who, boy, I'm going to say something. Look. Look. Man, trust in his word. Whatever his word said is what you do. If somebody trying to get you to do something or believe something that's not in his word, man, you about to get away. Be as a little child. Trust in him. But it's hard when you don't grow up and you've been leaning on your understanding all your life. What? Uh, hey, the minute they get grown, I'm grown. You don't tell me. And then my mama would say, okay, well, it's time for you to go pay Tico. You for to find out since you've grown. You want to come in the house when you want to? Hmm. Okay. Grown people take care of themselves. Huh? Want us to understand this. If we looking for him to protect us, to provide for us, to care for us, we got to be as little children. Depending on him. Whatever he say, that's what we do. Let me finish. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Then he answered and said unto me, we have sent, well, y'all catch this right here. Woo. Then he answered and said unto me, we have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight according to all that the Lord our God has commanded us. And when ye have girded on every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So I spoke unto you, and ye would not hear, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, and went presumptuously up unto the hill. And the Amorites which dwell in that land came out against you and chased you and, and chased you as bees do and destroyed you and, and Seir even until Armah. Uh, so when I was busting out laughing, let's see, you think when a, he say, I told you don't go up there, you think you grown like you went up there anyways, the boys start chasing you and you start running like bees chasing you. And I start imagining the boy them bees you ever see the be a, a wash get on somebody or get around them where they go to swat and run away this high when you don't trust in the Lord, you don't do what he tell you to do, you try to fight and take medals in your own hand, man, your enemy will have you running like a bee chasing you. See, when you had the opportunity to handle business, you were disturbed. Now you wanna now, now you see what was at stake. Now you want to take medals in your own hand. Too late. We trust in him with all we, we trust in him. When he tells us to do it, we do it. No doubt, and no matter what it looked like, he already he's already went ahead of us and fought. All we gotta do is follow behind him. Because when you walking in the spirit, they don't even see you, they're gonna see him. See what I'm saying? Those demons gonna see who in you. And the Amorites, which were I mean, verse 45, and ye returned and wept before the Lord. But the Lord will not hearken to your voice, neither give ear to you. So ye abode in Kadush many days according to the days that ye abode there. Okay. 
I'm going to jump over to verse 2 and just read verse 6 and 7. Chapter 2. Genesis, I mean, uh, Deuteronomy 2. Let me read 6 and 7. It says, um, Ye shall buy meat for, uh, ye shall buy meat for them for money that ye may eat and ye shall also buy water of them for money that ye may drink. For the Lord thy God have blessed thee in all thy works of thy hand, and knoweth thou walkest through this great wilderness these forty years. For the Lord thy God hath been with thee, thou hast liked nothing. The reason why I want to read that is like, because he already knows when you're going through a wilderness. He already knows when you're going through your trials, when you're going through tribulation. He's already set it up. So he's going to protect you. He's going to provide for you when you ain't liking nothing. There's nothing going to be a surprise to him. So when we're going through these things, we it's okay to trust him because he already knows he's going to provide for you. Because he already knows, okay, they should go through this trial. But it's set up to prove you. So it's nothing that we're going to go through or nothing going to just you get a phone call. It may be new to you, but I have already know you're going to get that phone call. You, you go in and your job lay you off. They, they say, hey, hey, it's over. You know, we got to shut it down. Okay, that ain't new to Abba. That's new to you. Now you just go through a new wilderness. He's already provided everything for you after that journey. He's already done it. You, 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 you get a phone call, you, you get a bad report, you get sick or something, like whatever the situation is. Okay, he already knew that. There's no need for you to start worrying on your, start worrying and not trusting him because something don't pop up. He's already know. He already he already fought the battle. He are he just wants you to trust in his word and stay the course, stay committed. No, no matter the outcome, you gonna be straight. We gonna be straight. But when we don't trust him, and then we try to figure it out on our own, that's when things go. No, that's when things they will go crazy. But if we just trust him and go through the wilderness. Everything is already provided in the wilderness for us. Everything is already provided in the wilderness for you. It's to prove you. It's nothing, it's nothing, no phone call, it is no test results, it's no nothing new that's a surprise to him. It ain't like you uh you, you, you get a phone call, then you say, Well, God, let me tell you what happened. I just got this phone call yesterday. Well, I just called such and such, don't done this to me. What are we going to do about this? He already know. Our job is to go to his word and prayer and say, okay, I, I know your word is true. I'm going to stand on your word. I know you don't respect the person. I see how you took care of so many people. You provided, you protected them, you healed them. I'm for the trust in your word. And you keep the trust. You stay committed to them. You stay anchored. No matter what happens. But we see here, as we read this story, that they came out of Egypt, didn't trust them because of the water, because of the food. They didn't trust them by what they were seeing. None of our kids, none of our kids ever doubt, right, what they're going to eat. I'm talking about, it's kids around the world. That's in this situation, but our kids are in this situation, and we thank the Almighty for His grace and mercy. But none of our kids is worrying about: Am I gonna eat tomorrow? They don't go to bed then. Am I gonna eat tomorrow? Or I, ha I hope the lights on. I hope it's running water. Y'all has blessed us in the situation that we can provide those things for, for our kids. So it's the same thing. We should be think we should be in a mindset that He's already taking care of every, everything for us. We can trust Him. You add extra stress to yourself when you doubt. And then the enemy, when he know you doubting or when you're a little shaky or you discouraged, now you can come with a whisper in your ear and now you try to make plans to figure it out. You you be more stressed out trying to make plans on how to fix a situation. Especially when you got more months than money. Well, you got more months than money, you go to count them months up, and you already see, man, this bank account got this in it. And I, I got another five more months before this comes. You go to count that. That change don't add up. 
boy, you go to try to, you'll try to make a move. <laughs> Don't try to make a move on your own. Keep the faith. Let's go to Second Corinthians, Zion. We about to wrap it up. I ain't gonna keep it too much longer. He's gonna make a way. Our job is to stand in that gap and pray. Even for our loved ones who 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 may be in situations that that we don't know how they got themselves in it and sure don't know how they're gonna get out. But our job is to have hope and pray that he's gonna make a way that he can get the glory out of the situation. Because sometimes our family members or friends get in a situation and then we go try to put them out with our own understanding. And we make it worse for them. Second Corinthians four. Yeah. Second Corinthians four. I'm gonna start at verse one. Gotta trust. I know people I tell this story and I, it's the truth, one hundred percent truth. And uh, I got two witnesses. I remember when I was younger, and um, I got a, one of my friends named Eric, right? And uh, Eric and Jamal, I had this car. And this is when I'm like, you know, I, I believe the Lord. You, you, you know, you're just coming to it and you trust him. And <laughs> I had a car. I did not have um the, the needle was broke on, right? So I, you know, this is when I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm in one of these phases where I'm like, I'm, I'm trusting the Lord now. So I had put some gas in the car. I know I had put gas in the next thing. No, the needle was working. The needle was working at this point. But this is what happens, I am. I'm in this car, I had filled it up, driving the car, I had been driving for a long time. I had been driving the car for about two, three weeks, and I realized that I didn't put no gas in the car, right? But my needle was still, that's what it was, my needle was still at full, like it, it was on full, but I knew I had been driving a car like two weeks, right? And it stayed on full. So at this time, this when I, I was separating from, from my old life, coming to the truth, I had been sharing with some of my friends, like good God is, I'm trusting him not, blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> Oh boy, I wish Eric was on here right now. This is a funny story to us. So he, so what happened? I'm telling them. I realized, like, hey man, I ain't put no gas in this car in like a week, two weeks or something. And I'm telling the boy Eric, I say, hey, man, I ain't put no gas in. So he like, he ain't put no gas. In. Oh Lord, he said you ain't put no gas here. And, and by two weeks, I say, nah, man, God got me. I'm trusting the Lord that I ain't gonna never have to buy gas again. I'm probably about at this time, probably about 18, 19. But I'm like, man, God got me, man. You know, this is when I'm first really trying to like change my life. And I'm like, man, I ain't gonna have to buy gas. Ooh, God got me. So he like, what? He said, man, your needle might be broke. So, so at this point, I'm like, nah, God got me, man. I'm just riding. Never put gas in the car, Zion. And so I'm riding. And then he kept telling me, he said, you ain't put a deal go by. Did you get gas yet? Say, nah, man, I ain't got gas, man. God got me, bro. I'm telling you, I, I don't think I'm going to ever have to buy gas again. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but I drove this car for at least, at least, at least two and a half weeks. And I, and I used to work pretty long ways, right? It, it, it stayed on full. It didn't move, right? So I'm just, every morning I get in that car. It was a little red, little Honda, Honda Accord. I get in that car, and I be praying. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you so much, Father, for everything you're doing. I'm praying, God, thank you so much. I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm trusting you. Oh, God, you're so good. Drive that car back and forth to work. That needle stayed that way. And then my friend, my boy Eric, he, he needed a ride. He said, look, man, you need to put some gas in this car, bro. I'm telling you, you need a broke. We're going to give us gas, right? And what happened, man, I believed him. And I remember when I believed him, I got scared. I'm like, you know what? That needle might be broke, man. My needle might be broke. 
and uh, I went and put gas in it, and gas went in the car. So I guess it didn't have no gas in it. But the point why I'm telling y'all this story, I believe that 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 Arba had me in a place where I don't know what's going on, but I know I won't put no gas in that car, and I didn't have no fear, and I was riding around. And it wasn't until my friend started telling me your needle broke and all this, man, you gonna give out the gas on the bridge and all this, that I said, oh Lord, let me, you may be right. And I put gas in there. And uh, you know, that that's that 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 story actually happened to me. But I'm saying it's because I believe you can get in the situation where Abba just can start blessing us in certain situations where, man, we won't have to, we won't be controlled by the elements of this earth. I know that's true. But it's people or, or lack of your 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 faith to understand that you will uh, get boxed in. You see? He he can put us in a situation where man, we ain't gotta depend on nothing but him. That's how he had them out there in the wilderness. And that that's a true story. I wish that, wish that brother was on that, because that on here, that brother, he still make me still kick it a day. That's a story that we share. But he and I tell him every now and then I used to say, Man, you caused me to be paying gas right now. That three dollars that pump was because of you. I won't have to pay no gas if I'd have kept my faith. But why say that's crazy? But I, I just believe that. I believe that. But I just want to tell that story about look, don't allow people, if y'all don't told you something, you hold on to it. I don't care how crazy it look. Don't let nobody tell you that what's going on, it ain't him working. Because their fear, their understanding of the situation will cause you to fear and be discouraged. Now nah, here you is, you don't miss your blessing. Yeah. You know how much money we could be saving on gas, girl. If you we save money on gas, keep my faith. Hallelujah. Let's get it. <laughs> Second Corinthians. Hallelujah. Verse four. Chapter Second Corinthians, chapter four. Yeah. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy and we faint not. So we got this ministry, right? And we have received mercy and we faint not, okay? Got a ministry, remember that. But we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid unto them that are lost. In whom the God of this world have blinded their minds. He ain't blinding eyes. He blinded their minds, their heart. Okay? Of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of, of, of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our heart to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Watch this, Zion. But we have this treasure in earthly earthen vessels that and, and, and some of them is say clay you look I think that word there clay as well it's talking about your body right you made out of clay it says but we have this treasure right in earthen vessels talking about your body we have a treasure inside your body what is the scripture talking about that 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 the excellent how you pronounce this word I always have excellent and see a tongue get in the way excellent and see that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So you have this treasure inside you, right? That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Look, if we can catch this part right here. Look, you have something in you. You have a ministry in you. You have some, a power that's in you. But first of all, you got to understand it's not you. Just the key. You got to understand it's not you that's bringing forth this power, okay? It's not you. If we can first get that, because look, you're not trusting in you, you're trusting in him. If we can understand that 
you can get that. You know what? It's 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 it's, it's, it's the Messiah in me. I literally have the Messiah inside me. I have this treasure in me, okay? And he's going to protect his, his treasure that's in me. If we can believe that, we will always trust in him. But we have to get to that point. It takes time to get to that point where we can actually believe that it's him that's in us, okay? We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. It's Job. You troubled on every side, but not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. You, you think about, you go back and read that story when they first, when they left Egypt, and you look at the story, you will see they was in this situation where they had the water in front of them, mountains on the side, and Pharaoh coming down behind them. There's nowhere to go. You got the water right here, you got two mountains on the side, and you got Pharaoh coming down beside you with his army. There's nowhere to go. And sometimes that's how you or we feel when you get in a situation where it feel like it's nowhere to go. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, you, you're in a situation where it, all the walls are closing in, so to speak. What am I going to do? But if you can remind yourself that I have a treasure that's in me, I have the power of the Almighty in me. I'm not going to be distressed. Sometimes loneliness can, can cause that where you feel like you've been alone by yourself. Everything is caving in on you. It could be your job. It could be health. It could be uh, 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 relationships. Whatever the situation is, it can cause you to get to a point where you feel distressed, like everything is caving in you. But if you can remember that, I got a treasure inside. I can trust him. I can trust that I'm going to get out of this situation. I'm going to be victorious in this situation. Matter of fact, I'm already victorious. I just got to wait to manifest into the earth. I just got to stay committed to his word and walk this thing out and stay committed and trust in his word. And I'm going to see the manifestation of the work that's already finished. If I can remain in him and not lean on my own understanding. Hmm? It says we are perplexed, but but not in despair. It says, oh man, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Have you ever been felt like you've been counted out, but you ain't been destroyed? You ever felt like that? You ever felt like people counted you out? People thought you was done, or you don't made such a bad decision? You really don't messed up. You really don't done it this time. But his grace and his mercy kept you. You bounce back. We here right now. Man, look, see, I don't like really, I don't mind talking about my past. It doesn't matter to me. But the, the thing is, man, look, if, if you look at your past, you look at where you come from, right? Your trials, your trials. And some people ain't never really been through nothing. But you can just look at your, if you ain't never really been through trial and tribulations, but as living wise, you can look at how you used to be angry, bitter, selfishness, stubbornness, right? You can look at those things, right? And, and, and get an understanding, right? Of, of, of being distressed on how he brought you from these things. How after battle, after battle, after battle, you have overcame. And now you're here right now. we all together right now. Give him the praise, give him the honor, give him the glory. So, Whatever comes up next, whatever trial comes up next, we just got to keep that same trust, keep that same faith in him. Because you can go back last year, two years ago, 10 years ago, and say, wow, I don't know how I got out of that one. And most of the time, we mess up. We, we put ourselves in those situations. But that grace and mercy show up. Grace and mercy show up. Give us an opportunity to repent. To get it right, to, to 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 build more trust in him. When we should be trusting in him for what he done last year, anyways, the year before last, or even yesterday. Persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, 
that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. See, this is what this thing is about. This is about glorifying him in us. But we have to die. We have to trust that I don't care about dying to this flesh. I'm going to reveal who he is in this earth by me giving up my life, my desires, what, what I want, what I think is right. I'm going to give up me in order so he can be manifested in this earth. And to do that, you're going to have to trust him. Didn't Yahshua have to do the same thing? He had, when he got on that cross, he had to trust that Abba was going to raise him up and the spirit of Abba was going to raise him up. We got to trust him the same way that when we die to this flesh, when we humble ourselves, he ain't going to let you uh, 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 die like that. He's going to show forth his glory. But we got to have that same trust that, you know, I'm going to humble out. I'm going to let him or her have it, you know, and I'm just going to show forth the glory of the Almighty. I'm going to show the Messiah in this situation. But it's so many times people want to get you to show you. I don't have people tell me, we talk about the Bible, and I'm going to go to the scripture. Brother tell me, I don't want to see the Bible. What you think? Ask me a question. I'm going to show you what the words say. Tell me, no, I don't want to see the Bible. I don't want, what, what you think? Brother, what I think don't mean a hill of beans. I'm going to tell you what his words say. Everybody want to know what you think. It don't matter what we think. It matters what this word says. We got to trust in this word. This what matters. So the enemy is trying to get us not to trust in this word. That's the key. He's trying to so he's trying to get most of Israel not to believe in the word so now you can trust in your own self. Believe in your own research. Believe in your own understanding. I don't put no trust in no culture. I don't put no trust in no language. I don't put no trust in myself. I put trust. I don't even put the trust that he that I can quote scriptures or whatever. I put trust that I know that I believe that he's in me, that he's going to teach me and he's going to never leave me forsake me if I don't forsake him. That's what I put my trust in, that he is the word, the living word. That he is that that, that he is the uh, a conqueror. That he would defeat my battles. That he would bring all things back to my remembrance. And what to say. That he would give me what to say at what hour. That's what I put my trust in. I'm learning at this point not to, I'm learning how to kill this flesh, not to get uh, angry, you know, when somebody say something crazy or do something, say something crazy, do something crazy. I'm learning how to not react. That's 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 I'm a long way. I don't know how far I am, but sometimes somebody, whoever it is, say some pray to do some pray that I might react to the unappropriate outside of the character of I'll, I'll say that. But I'm learning to trust in him even in that. Trust in him not not really, not straight things or get let me get my you know disrespect type. You know, trust in you know what? Okay, Abba, Hallelujah, you got it. That, that, that's what I'm trying to learn. And that's a part of killing that flesh. That's a nasty flesh. Okay? That want to defend itself. Flesh want to defend itself. You got to trust in the Lord that he's that he going to defend you. But, um, well, well, I love her for that. Verse, verse 11. For we which live are always delivered unto death of Jesus. Say, well, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it's written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all the things are for your sake that the abundant grace might do the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For we cause, for what for which cause we think not, but through our outward man perish. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. We we can read that, but do we believe it? Do we trust what his word is saying? 
It's hard. For our light affliction, which is but a mo for a moment, worketh for us for a far more excellent, exceeding, exceeding, and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. See, this is hope. It's a part of that trust, that hope, right? While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So Zion, who can give you, who, who here can look into the eternal with their own natural eyes to have this type of hope? He has to open our eyes so we can have this type of faith to seek the things of the kingdom where he can show us what to have hope in. But if we just rely and on our own understanding, we're going to be going off the things that we see with these natural eyes. And it's easy to be deceived with these natural eyes and these natural ears. We, 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 have to, we have to understand when we're dealing with trust, it's, it's, it's a, we have to get to the point where, you know what, I'm going to trust you with my whole life. I'm not going to trust you with part of my life. I'm going to trust you with my whole life. And that's the reason why it's hard to, that's the reason why it's hard for us to get to that level of trust because your life is on the line. We're trusting with, with little things, right? Red light, green light. We're trusting with stuff like that. We're trusting with the food we eat, save grace, right? We're trusting with that. But you trust that he will protect you, the real you. You do you trust that if you die to your flesh and kill this flesh, kill that ego? Do you trust that 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 that, that, that even if you get shamed, even if somebody shame you, you trust that you still gonna get the glory with him? You ain't gonna take his glory, but you will. You will appear when he appears. Do you trust that? Are you willing to forsake all? The disciples was there. Disciples had to forsake all. Are you willing to forsake all? Do we trust them on that level yet? It, it, it definitely, man. I'm telling you now. It, it's definitely gonna take. Uh, um, it, it definitely Zion would take a, a little time to um, to get to this point. It, it definitely would take time to get to this point. Definitely, definitely. We take time. But we can get there. We got to get there. We got to trust them. Look, that's all I got in this hour. We trust them enough to put us in situations, like I said earlier, right? But let's trust them to get us through situations, right? If we want something. We praying for it. We'll have all the trust in the world that he that he put us in that particular situation. But when it don't go the way you want it to go, will you trust that he gonna get you through the situation or whatever it is? And that's where we at. Uh, don't trust them. Don't just trust them until a certain situation comes up. Trust them all the way to the end. Endure to the end, Zion. Hallelujah. That's all I got at this hour. Yeah. Do this Hebrew roll call. Any questions, comments, or concerns so far before we get into this Hebrew roll call? Hallelujah. Let's get it. We got Brother Ardeen on. What you got for us, Brother Ardeen? Let's go to the next uh, brother Samson. What you got, Hebrew? Preach ya. Blessed word today. Shalom, family. Oh man, good, good, good. I like to thank you. I do miss y'all. I do appreciate it, man. Love you. Love you, bro. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, TJ. Man, Shabbat Shalom, family. Beautiful word. Like Abba for uh 
feeding you the right ingredients to help and keep us encouraged. All praise to the Most High. Okay, let's keep following the King until we get to the kingdom and beyond. All praise to Abba. Hallelujah. Get it, Brother Johnny. Got anything you want to add, Brother Johnny? Uh, no, not today. Hallelujah. Good to have you on, Hebrew. Mother Barbara J. Johnson. A uh, Koti Regina. Hi, Shabbat Shalom, saints. Wow, this is the, the trust that we need, that uh, faith, really to get our, our hearts strong for what we're going to see. I love your example with the children. You say, uh-uh, we don't eat that at our house. We ain't eating that here. <laughs> and on the internet, there's a lot of people serving up their fathers and what they say, mama's cooking. <laughs> it's a lot of that <laughs> Right, but everybody that you said some people's opinions, we have to trust y'all just like Caleb did in Numbers, what you gave us Deuteronomy 1, Numbers 13 as well. You know, everybody's heart isn't panning, panning out right in this last day. They got these opinions and they're trying to do a good job, right, of encouraging us as, as y'all's people to get right and get our inheritance on in the right track and that's spiritually the way I see it. But yeah, we can't. Um, waste our energy and, and time fighting in the way that some of these opinions are trying to gear us up to fight because that that energy ain't, ain't the way y'all wants us to you know to make our um, path straight and it also you know we're, we're growing as a people Hebrews are really we are really getting our, our steps in order but um, this goes back to what you said at first when it um, the IRS audits right a lot of us are having our lives audited as well, and we're being held accountable for those words that we're speaking. Everybody speaking mm -hmm. it shouldn't be speaking, talking about, oh, this is how we, because they haven't lived it. And there's a difference. You can't mm -hmm. say that when you haven't put it into practice and think that just because you're saying it, it's okay. You're going to be held accountable. And a lot of our, our Hebrews who are trying to stand up as leaders and get on these tube streets <laughs> and say certain I things, agree. they start following. We'll see it. It's like watching. Um, I believe for us, for those who legitimately are, are getting our, our in, let me let me reference why why I said the audit is happening. David, right? Second Samuel, last um, right. last uh, uh, chapter of of Second Samuel, we see the audit happen. Seven thousand, mm -hmm. seven seven seventy thousand, seven thousand. I got to get my my. Um, but they fail. Uh, he numbered eight hundred thousand in Israel and then five hundred thousand in. Um, Judah, and right as the the angel of Yah started <laughs> wiping them out because some of them were were trying to you know they couldn't be numbered with the men of battle, so we we're going to see it anyway. Um, back to what I was thinking. Um, yes, it's like watching a matador, right? The the guy with the um the big red thing who who has the bull and the bull the whole time is being tricked where he doesn't. You know, he, he's got that mind, that matador has that mind control over him. And he's controlling mm -hmm. total behavior modification up until <laughs> that bull one day realizes, uh-oh, I can get him. He's not that giant. Just like Caleb saw. They're not giant. They, mm -hmm. I, I love this when, um, when uh, Moray Troy brings a lesson out. He talks about their, their light work. They're bread for us to eat. And my son yeah, said, they're yeah. Hey, you know, <laughs> that's what we're going to see. The bull is it, the bull never gores that matador, but one day the bull realizes that that cape isn't an extension of that matador. He's not as tall as he is. That giant is frail. And the bull's trust, trust in that matador shifts. And the matador finally gets what is, you know, what's coming to him. Our trust is shifting his right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well put. Good stuff, Akuti. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, Coachy Monica, what you got? Shabbat Shalom, family. Sorry I was a little late today. Um, I will have to go back and watch the replay to get the very beginning and all of the definitions for today. But from what I caught towards the end, um, today's message was for me. <laughs> and uh, when it comes to having that childlike faith, 
I feel like there are certain areas in my life where I definitely am very much like a child where I have no questions. I'm just here to do what I'm told to do. And nobody can shake me in those areas. But when it comes to some of those bigger things, like you were mentioning, like if you lose a job or you get laid off, these are the areas where I feel my faith um, falters. Falters? Is that a word? I don't know. If it, it, it fails. Um, I want to say that I believe in Abba 100%, just like a child. But we have to be honest with ourselves. If we're not, we can't grow to that level of faith. And so um, I'm working on it. Um, but I know I can't do it on my own. So I asked Abba to to put that in me, to put that type of faith in me. Not that I want those moments to come about that test me, because when you ask for strength, he'll give you moments to be strong in, won't he? <laughs> so I get scared to ask for that strength because I don't <laughs> want the trial to come upon me. But without it, then I never get a chance to grow. Um, but it, 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 for me, it is tough in those moments to give it all over to him. And um, I'm going to give myself a little grace in this area and not beat up on myself too much because I am growing. Um, and I see that day by day, he gives me grace in those areas, but, um, I don't know. I don't know. Today just really touched me. I, I, there's a lot of improvement in the faith area for me. Um, and I just want to get to that point. Um, like you said, that when, when trials and tribulations come our way, we don't try and interject our own understanding. It's leaning on his understanding, mm. not our own. And I try and remind myself of that daily, but there are trials and moments that come upon me in my life where in the midst of it, I totally forget, totally forget. And then you look back in hindsight and go, I left him out of that situation completely. Mm. And, uh, it's a little embarrassing to say that that's the truth, but that's truly where I am in my walk. And I thank you for um, allowing Abba to use you to bring out these messages because they they test me and help me to improve myself on my walk. That's it. Sorry, that was a lot. Nah, good stuff. Hallelujah. Good stuff. Well said. Man, it's like, look at it like this. It's like lifting weights. Brother Samson, he 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 he's a weight lifter. Look, you don't just get under start lifting 220, 300 at first. You start out with whatever you start out with, 50, 100, 150, 200. So that's how trust is it. These little trials we're going through, it's building. It's building your trust up, building your trust. You trust me, you trust nothing. But the thing is, we just gotta acknowledge that he's the one that got you to a point A to point B. And then you realize, wow, I trust him now, I trust him now, I trust him now. Then they think, no, that trust level is on a whole nother level. You know, then, then it's like you're benching 300. But you started out at 50. That's how faith is. It gives you a measure, but then the more you trust them, you grow, you grow, you grow. So I love what you said, but you, you're right there. Just keep trusting him, but acknowledge him every time you get a small victory, that you trust him in this area and look at the benefit of it, look at the glory, look at and he's getting out of it, right? Then you'll see that thing to start. We all are growing. Everybody growing. Right? Hallelujah. Good stuff. Uh, Koti Mitchell Lee. Shabbat shalom, everyone. First of all, thank you so much for the food. This was very good and very tasty. Um, I, I think the thing that uh, stood out to me the was what you said at the very end. It's um, where you say, Let's trust Yah to get us through the situation, even when it doesn't go the way we think. Um, a lot of times we project our own emotions, our own feelings, our own ideas on a situation and forget that Abba says that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So just because we think something is supposed to go a certain way doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way that it's going to go. And so uh, we need to... Um, even when things don't look the way we think it should, we need to suspend that expectation that we might have and just allow, just to just follow and allow Yah to lead the way because um, he has a totally different agenda um, than we may have. And I was thinking about Dothan and um, Korah and, uh, 
you know, they had their own agenda. They had their own thing that they were trying to accomplish. They had their own doubts, but rather than um, taking it to the, their other brothers and sisters, they should have taken it to Yah. We need to make sure that when we're feeling our own doubts or our own insecurities, that we're not burdening our brothers and our sisters with it. You may have one or two people that you go to and you share um, those things, but uh, fear feeds on fear. So if you have a doubts, your own doubts, and somebody else has a doubt. It may be a little doubt, but your doubt will then make them doubt themselves. So rather than uh, putting ourselves um, when we're feeling that way and, and then gathering people around us who think the same way, we need to take it and fight it out with Yah first, and then then he will straighten us out, and then we won't have these, these areas of discord because we've already taken it to Yah and surrendered it to him. Well put. Hallelujah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hallelujah. Good stuff, Coach. Uh, Troy, what you got, Hebrew? You sure. Hey, once again, Shabbat Shalom to the family. Excellent word, bro. Uh, you know, something we all need, man. That trust. It, it man, you got to get this thing rooted in your heart, and we got to, we got to just continue. You said it before, man. We got to continue to believe in this word. Uh, these hirelings that's out here, man, who who claim to be among us just like corin dathan they always come with a better way they always trying to come with something that they <laughs> a better way to get you up out of this book man let's just go back to egypt let's go back to the land that was flowing with milk and honey they try to come with something new to get you out of this book and so when you see that that's that that's that sign that you need to get away from that individual when they say hey uh i got something to prove this bible wrong and then they bring you something new trying to get you away from the bible don't uh don't let them uh, get you off the path, but we got we to gotta stay rooted, stay rooted in Christ, um, man, and, and just get this word down in you and, uh, and, and trust and believe this word for yourself and uh, don't let nobody take you off the path. So, but beautiful word, excellent word, bro, man. Much love to the family. Hallelujah. All oh, praise. What you got here? Um, only thing that I would add is is that the father knows exactly what we need before we ask. So we don't have to ask him for anything. He knows everything we need. And he gives us our faith, the patience, everything we need at the moment we need it, we have it in us to endure. And if you fail, you don't have it, but it just shows you where you have to continue to trust God because the trial, it will come again. So the only thing I'll say is, and I don't, you know, I don't expect everybody to do how I do. Don't ask for it. He knows when to give it to you. Sometimes we may ask for things and we're not ready. Then when you get in battle, you get to see, oh, I wasn't even ready for what I asked for. So, you know, the father knows what we have need of. We don't have to ask for it. Hallelujah. All praise. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hallelujah. Stay prepared, man. This he know already. We like look. He told them Zion good stuff. Look, he, he told them, and it's almost like when I look at the stories, it, it, you can kind of understand when you look at yourself why these people are doing some of the stuff they were doing because they didn't know. It's like it, it's total trust, it's total dependency upon him, right? But they like the scripture says they like nothing. He know what you need. You know what I'm saying? He literally know who know what you need better than him. He just want to see if we're gonna depend on him for it, or you gonna try to make another way. But it's you know we growing, we growing, we growing, and uh, just just that's why I think for that grace and mercy, that grace and mercy, that compassion, that patience. Boy, when you fall short, give me the test. Yeah, I want it. Let's go. He like, all right, yeah. And you fail, you like, oh Lord. He got you. He got us. But uh good stuff. I uh, love y'all. Let's keep it going. I'm gonna uh read first Corinthians 110. We're gonna pray out. Yo, what does scripture say? Didn't say uh your father having know what you have need of. Let me say that. It says that. Well, yeah, let's pray, let's pray out for you. Father, again, we, we thank you. We thank you for already being a provider, for already mm, 
being a protector. Just as little babies that come out of the womb, infants, we already know that we have to get milk, we have to get pampers, we have to get wipes. We have to get stuff for this baby. We already know what they need. You already know all of our needs. Father, just, just give us a mind to want to, hallelujah, trust in you, Father. To, to, to just, just have faith, Father. That you would that, that you that you that you would keep your word, that you that every promise you spoke will come to pass. Any doubt, anything that's causing us to be discouraged, get it away from us. Get it out of our hearts. Get grumbling and complaining out of our hearts. Put our, our, our mind and our eyes, hallelujah, on you, on the kingdom. That way we don't start comparing ourselves to other people as well. Hallelujah. Help us not to compare ourselves with other people. Hallelujah. Because our identity is in you. Let us be grateful and thankful and content on where you have us at this point. Because you brought us to where we are. We didn't bring ourselves. So we trust in the fight. If you brought us this far, you can take us however far we're supposed to go. Again, we love you and we just thank you so much. We will trust you. We will trust you and we will not lean on our own understanding. We will trust in your word. And we love you and we thank you. In the name of your son, Yeshua, we pray. Amen. First Corinthians 1.10. And let me, I also, man, y'all pray for the um, Saunders family. One of my brothers, he, 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 he lost someone. Um, lost, lost his daughter. One of my dear brothers, man, pray for him. Uh, beautiful brother. I just ask y'all just to pray and um, that y'all will keep them, keep them strong in, in, in this time of, um, in, in, in this time right here. So we, we, I just pray for, for uh, send a word of, of strength to the, to the Saunders family um, in their morning. But uh, don't, 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 don't let it, don't let that morning, hallelujah, mourn too long. Don't, don't let that morning take them. Take them to a down place. Let, let joy be in their, in their hearts and their lives, Father. I just wanted to say that uh, for my brother. So, <clears throat> First Corinthians one ten. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. <clears throat> hey, let's get there. Trust this word, trust that Abba is in you, that his spirit is in you, and that man, it, it's nothing that we can't do if we rely on him, okay? Hallelujah, love y'all. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family.